Hello everyone and welcome to season two of the Happiness Journey with Dr. Dan. For this season, we will bring in guests who will share their own path to happiness. Now we all have a different definition to what happiness means to all of us. For some, it's a huge mansion by the ocean, while others would prefer excellent health and longevity. In this season, my guests will share their journey on overcoming challenges and managing to keep moving forward despite the odds. This show will make you laugh or cry, but most importantly, it will inspire you. Now, if they went through tough times and survived, you can too. Now, no matter how hard things may seem, there's always something good coming around the corner. Sometimes, painful things can teach us lessons that we didn't think we needed to know. Today, we have a special guest, Stephen McAllister. Now, Stephen had to overcome the challenges of being autistic, dealing with bullying at school, managing to maintain good grades despite the challenges he faced. Autism, also called Autism Spectrum Disorder, is a serious development disorder that impairs the ability to communicate or interact with others. Now, the range and severity of symptoms can vary widely. Now, the common symptoms include difficulty with communication or social interaction, having obsessive interest and repetitive disorder. Now, that could also be perceived as OCD on steroids. Now, there are more than 200,000 new cases of autism found every single year in the USA. Now, the most highly functional form of autism is Asperger's syndrome, and we also have autistic savant, just like the Rain Man with Dustin Hoffman, where most of them have passion for complex mathematical formulas or counting cards in Las Vegas. Now, Stephen will share with us his journey and battles that he had to face dealing with being autistic. Stephen, thank you for being here today, and hey, welcome to, to the happiness journey. Thanks, glad to be here. Excellent. Now, when did you find out that you had autism? Um, I actually found out when I was very young, at the age of five. Um, I noticed that while I acted like some people, there were a bunch of more others that acted differently than me. So one day I asked my mom, why am I so different? And that's when she told me that I had autism. And she had described it as like a special gift rather than a disorder. So ever since I learned about it, I wanted to learn more about how it affected my life and how in turn uh, how it affected how others viewed me. I see now we all have uh, known, I mean, there's been on the news that certain vaccine can cause autism. Now, have you been hit by a vaccine that probably did this or it was at birth that you had autism? I've have heard about I've heard about this before, this whole vaccination cause an autism thing. And one thing I'd like to make clear is that my autism is from my grandfather or Opa, if you're German, and I'm proud to have autism. And as for the idea of vaccinations causing autism, here's what I understand about it. The idea of vaccination is that it's supposed to help improve the body's immune system. So it's like the flu or the viruses. It gets injected into the bloodstream and it helps the cells fight flus and viruses. Now, while the blood in your veins goes through the heart into your brain, the blood does not affect the what goes on in the brain or the DNA. So whenever someone can figure out how the brain or, vac or how the vaccinations or blood somehow alters the genetic formula in our brains or rewiring to somehow cause autism, feel free to let me know. <laughs> Interesting. Have you done like thorough research on the subject? Well, I mean, you don't even need to do that much extensive research. Like so many people try to bring up like, oh, these scary formulas or research things that kind of scare people and all. But in order to understand whether or not vaccination causes autism, you need to understand what vaccinations are and what autism is. Autism mm -hmm. is something that is in the brain. It's within the DNA. Vaccines or vaccinations are supposed to help with the body's immune system. system. They're two entirely different things. Well, that's actually a very good point. I mean, it's like some people, I mean, we're all born with cancer cells. Some people will develop cancer in their lifetime, others will not. And the, some of the reason is probably the external environment or their diet, the, the stress level that they deal with. So that's possibly one of the, I guess, you know, they're doing this just to scare people, as you mentioned. So that's kind of uh, odd a bit. Now, how did you struggle? I mean, how did you deal with autism when you were young, when you were in school? I know that kids tend to bully others, uh, people who are different. How did you manage that? 
Uh, I've actually dealt with bullying several times. Uh, like there were instances where people either mock me by making the same weird noises that I do, or there were times like they would throw rocks or pills at me. And yes, there were a few times that I got beaten up pretty bad. And in terms of how I handled it, at first I kind of ignored it. Think about the idea of, like the bullies are just doing this to get attention. So if I ignore them, they eventually go away. It doesn't eventually just gets escalates more and more and more until they get that kind of reaction that they would want from you. So eventually I started talking to other people about it and eventually the problem go away, uh, went away. And it's something I'd like to tell other people that just because you ignore the problem doesn't mean it's going to go away. Nothing starts or stops unless you take action. Mm -hmm. And how did you take action then? I mean, in terms of like, you just told them to stop dealing or stop bullying you? Or did you tell the principal? I mean, what, uh, what, how did you cope with it? Most of the time I would tell uh, my friends or my teachers if they were around. No, I did not confront them myself because I'm not exactly physically <laughs> built as many people would probably know about me. Mm -hmm. And my muscles are more focused on here rather than here. Okay, now, is it true? I mean, I, I've mentioned autistic savant. Would you say that you're part of like having that extra gift of looking at a mathematical formula and saying, I know the solution before the even computer can find out the solution? <laughs> uh, well, let's see. Autism has given me many skills, but I'm not so sure about the math department. Okay. I'm more of the artistic and creative side of things. I like to create and make stuff. Okay, such as what do you create? Well, I've recently started doing a YouTube channel where I make videos where I do like vlogs talking about my experience with autism. The okay. YouTube channel's name is Toast and Mac. Okay. I do autism vlogs every Saturday about it. And I really like working on video stuff because of like the level of complexity some of them could be. Like some of the animations and effects that you do during the video. It doesn't have to be just sit a camera in front of you, say something, and then publish out. They're just so much level of freedom and creativity in the editing process. And of course, I also, I'm also an author, so I've published a few books about autism as well. Uh, do you mind showing to the camera? Oh, right, the there they are. <laughs> yeah, there, I almost <laughs> forgot. So this one, if I can hold it right, is uh, Traces, an Autistic Pathway to Creative Expression. This is the first book I've published, um, and I wanted to talk about the daydreaming aspect of autism because we can tend to pace around or wander off a bit. But what a lot of people miss about daydreaming is that just because individuals with autism or autistic people, there are many ways to address it, just because they daydream doesn't necessarily mean that we're cut off from the rest of the world. Far from it. It could be our way of brainstorming or mm -hmm. adapting with a certain situation. Like, you ever watch that uh, Nickelodeon show, Doug? Like whenever mm. Doug would like go into this fantasizing world about a certain situation, or either some dreamy thing or demonic setting, it's kind of like that. And then this most recent one I published was On the Trail with Annie and Angel. Now this one's a bit more about bonding between parents and kids because it's very difficult whether you're a kid or a parent, it doesn't matter who, it could be quite a challenge because like in this story, it kind of illustrates how they can walk the same path, but at the same time, not exactly see the same way as the other person does. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to create a book to kind of address that, well, I'm not sure if I want to say conflict, but rather a bit of a challenge to overcome. So is it mostly for parents and kids who are autistic, or parents that are autistic and the kids who are normal? Does it go both ways? Uh, both ways. I was trying to make I was trying to make the books available for anyone and everyone, because I feel like everyone deserves to know about the message I'm trying to get out there. Okay. And as you know, like people like Walt Disney, um, when they make their stuff, they're kind of focused on like the kids. So that way, as the years go by, they kind of grow with the stuff, and then they introduce their kids about it, and so on and so forth. Interesting. Now, um, when you were in school, did you have difficulty with studies and with grades? Well, I, mean, I struggled with a lot of things in school, but getting good grades and doing well in my classworks, not one of them. Not one of them. Because, like, one of the advantages I had was, like, a level of organization. So it really helped me out in school. Okay, so the, the fact, I mean, did you, were you interested in what you were studying or it was something that you just didn't care about? 
It depended on the subject. Like if it was like photography or where something I got my hands on, then I was interested. Like, but if it was like math or reading, unless it was like a really good story or topic, then not as much. Interesting. Okay, we will take a quick break and stay tuned to hear more from our guest, Stephen McAllister. Message from the universe, quality over quantity. You really don't have to try so hard. That's why there's magic and miracles. Remember? Tally-ho, the universe. When you try too hard at something or someone, you come out to be desperate. The same goes when going after someone you like. Taking it easy and not be a stalker will increase your chances to get that person to like you back. Playing it cool is what is required to get what you want. Showing stress or insecurities will just spoil all your hard work and will bring you back to square one if you're lucky enough. When working towards your professional goals, you need to learn to be patient, accept failures, and learn from mistakes. You need to not allow yourself to be disappointed with the realities of life and accept misfortune with open arms. If you want to climb the ladder of success, you need to have both of your hands holding that ladder and always think outside the box. Eventually, with enough challenges you will face in life, you will change your perception about how things work and you will adapt these changes to your own life. Always keep your head up when walking and make sure to always smile throughout your journey in life. Now to learn more about the universe, be sure to catch my show, The Happiness Journey, right here on MCM. Welcome back everyone, my name is Dr. Dan and I'm here with Stephen McAllister. Now we're discussing his journey through life dealing with autism. Again, thank you very much for being on the studio today. Oh, we're back? Yes, oh, we are. Okay. <laughs> Now tell me, Stephen, um, we've discussed you know, in the beginning about kids with autism. Mm -hmm. Now, as being an adult, how, do, how is it you know, working in an adult environment and dealing with autism? That depends on what kind of work field you're looking at. Like some of my experiences was like being a floor clerk at ACC Bookstore or like a cashier at Home Depot. So it's like customer service oriented where you interact with people. So it kind of helped me practice with like when do I tell a joke, when do I not tell a joke, and the important thing like listening to the customers, hearing what they want. But also, I also do some freelance photography and video work as well where I actually go out and like photograph or video depending on the event and then get the finished product to them the next day. Like you also got to know like in the adult world, before you even get into the adult world, you need to know what you want to go into and what you don't want to go into. Like for me, I've heard that a lot of people would assume that autistic people would be fine with like a computer job or engineering job, but not me. For me, my ideal job is getting out there to the people, talking with them, interacting with them, because, well, I just like attention. I want to <laughs> be heard. <laughs> now, um, when you hear about uh, kids with autism, you, you mentioned about your vlog, mm -hmm. okay, that you have on uh, YouTube. Um, do you help people deal with kids who have autism by giving them tips? And if so, what kind of tips do you give? Most of the time when I do autism vlogs on Toastemac, uh, T-O-S-T-E-M-A-C, sorry, I, it's a force of habit. Yeah, yeah. No uh, problem. Most of the time when I do autism vlogs, I try my best to pull it from personal experience because I feel like anyone can just research a paper, pull up facts here and there, and suddenly it's supposed to mean something. But when you draw from personal experience, that knowledge or wisdom, if you want to call it, has a bit more value rather than something you look at through a book. Because my personal belief is something that's earned is a lot more valuable and more important than something just given to you. That's a good point. Exactly. And because of this, have you encountered others that have kids who are autistic and have you talked to parents and letting them know like face to face instead of just like on a blog and letting them know hey this is how you need to deal with situations like that and so on and so forth. Um, I've talked to quite a few parents with autistic kids yes but during those times it was like I was going with my mama she's a nurse and a huge expert with autism um, so we would go to like certain events like networking events and parents would be like oh how, what do we do when an autistic kid does this or that and mom would just say well, just go to him. He has autism. He knows 
what to do with it. Um, so most of the time I give like general advice on what to do with certain things unless they have like specific questions, then I would try to answer it to the best of my ability or just let them know. I may not have experience with this, but I know that my mom does. I can um, get some contact information with her so you guys can kind of discuss certain things. Because while I know a lot of things about autism, I don't know everything, or at least not as much as my mom does. So, Okay. Now, would you consider yourself as Asperger? Um, well, in terms of like how people talk about my autism, it doesn't really matter too much to me personally. It's kind of like either Steve or Steven. It doesn't really matter. It's either Asperger, autistic, or individual with autism. It doesn't matter too much to me. However, one important thing to remember is when you address the autistic community, you need to be careful on how you word certain things. Mm -hmm. I actually did a vlog recently on how to de uh, address the autistic community and saying certain things could mean different things. Like when I say individual with autism, one person could view it as like putting the person first before the mental disability. Others would think of it as trying to separate the person from autism. Same can be oh, said with okay. autistic people. Like when you may be highlighting autism more than the person or another person could see autism and the person are one person you can't distinguish between the two. So it's very specific. Hmm. That is interesting what you just mentioned. Now, um, if we go back to what you mentioned about the bully part, mm -hmm. okay? Now, bullying, as you know, people will just bully for just the fact of bullying, uh, especially those who are dealing with uh, your issues of autism. Right. Now, as we know, what kind of advice would you give to all the autistic uh, viewers out there or the family that have autistic children? Uh, when it comes to bullying, how do they how they should deal with it? Well, the the biggest thing I would say is don't stay quiet. Talk about it because if you think that just ignoring it or just staying quiet and hoping the bullies will get bored and go away, that's not going to happen. The bullies pick on people to get attention, to get some kind of reaction, to get them to do something, for lack of a better word, stupid. But when you talk to other people about it, get them involved, that's when the real progress begins. They can confront the bullies, ask them to stop, or contact with the bullies' parents and whatnot. And it's important to learn how to deal with bullies early on because is one of the cold truth is bullying does not stop at school. It can happen anywhere. It could be the workforce. It could be college. It could be other events. It, and it might not even be because of a disability. It may not, it may be because of the gender, it may be because of height, or weight, or, or color of your skin, or maybe they just decide to pick on someone random just for the heck of it. So don't stay quiet about it. Talk to someone about it. So what do you do for fun then? Oh, me? Beside, uh, beside your talents of photography or video making, outside of all this, what do you do for fun then? Well, um, let's see. It, if I'm not like doing photography and videography stuff, I'm either out with friends to go to certain events or playing games online with my friends. Like no matter what I do, I always make sure to kind of have a certain level of socialization involved. Mostly because I like being around people, but it also helps improve on my social skills, so it, which is like one of the biggest obstacles for autistic people like me. So whether it's something I'm doing as a profession or something to do in as a spare time, I always try to figure out how can I factor social skills in? How can I practice and improve on it? Hmm. And we talked about like certain uh, OCD symptoms. Now what would be yours as an autistic? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, organization is one of my strengths. I like to keep things uh, neat and tidy, but I wouldn't necessarily say on the OCD level. I think there's a couple uh, members in my family who don't have autism, <laughs> but are a bit more um, organized focused than I am, <laughs> or okay. OCD as you would call it. <laughs> now, do you have a lot of friends that are autistic as well, or you try to stay away from it and deal with people that could interact on the regular basis? Well, I'm not really picky on who I interact with, basically anyone and everyone who I get a good vibe on. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I do have several friends who are on the spectrum like me. If not Asperger's Syndrome, then maybe ADHD or ADD. Mm -hmm. But 
with the right learnings and doing uh, getting to the autism challenges like as early as possible, like when you address it at a young age, you begin to build the social skills better and better to a point where you're able to socialize normally. Like with me, for instance, a lot of people are shocked when they find out I have autism. They're like, no way, you're bluffing. Mm -hmm. Nope, Asperger's syndrome. Interesting. Now I have read, I mean, I've done a lot of research on autism and they, some people say, or some scientists say that if you take it early on mm -hmm. and you've given the right training, you could really minimize as much as possible any symptoms that relate to autism. Is that true if you take it early enough? Well, my parents always said that early intervention is key. The earlier you help your autistic kid, the better off that person will be. However, I wouldn't necessarily say minimizing the symptoms of autism. Like, autism is something that's going to be there for the rest of your life. It's in your DNA. It's a little rewiring of the brain. Now, while you can make so that the clear signs don't show up as obvious or as often, it's not really something you can, like, completely hide or kind of disguise as something else. It's something that's a part of you, like a bunch of hand gestures, when I look around and whatnot, that's just a part of who I am. So while you can reduce like the frequency of it with enough practice, it's not something you can get rid of. Okay, but you could, well, well let's, let's reiterate, not minimize, but you could really do everything in your power so people will always question, does he really have autism? Because it's really the symptoms of the way that you discuss with others, they will never, never even guess it. Uh, yes, it is possible for people like me or autistic people to get to this kind of social socialization level. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing to remember is that since there's a wide spectrum of autism, there's right. high functioning, there's low functioning. But the one thing to consider is no matter what, where on the spectrum your autistic kid f follows, they do have a special talent or a special skill, and they have their own special way of communicating. It may not be vocalization like I am, or maybe not writing or reading, but they have their own certain way. And once they can get their message across, you'll find that they have a lot to say. Hmm. Okay. Now, on your daily uh, routine, mm -hmm. what, what would you do that uh, helps you like cope with your situation or even interact better with others? I mean, do you take a specific step that will help with your social skills or with your communication skills and so on and so forth. What do you do? Do you take any step for that? Uh, mainly what I would do is remember when I was telling you about my um, first book about daydreaming and whatnot and how it can cope with the situation? Like let's say it's before a work day or maybe it's after work day and something really unorthodox happened. What I would do is kind of like daydream a little bit and play different scenarios in my head like oh things could have went that way or things could go that way and so on and so forth that way I'm kind of not only coping with the upcoming situation or a situation that's already passed but kind of prepare myself for what would come afterwards hmm okay wow now like I mentioned for everyone out there that are actually watching this show would you, uh, if you had to talk to their kids or to have talk to the mother or the father, um, would you give them like a magical solution for how to deal with their kid on a daily basis, especially depending on the spectrum they fall in, because there's severe um, cases of autism and there's a highly functional set of autism. Is there a way that you will be able to kind of guide them? Well, in terms of a magical solution, I'm afraid that <laughs> doesn't really exist. Like my mom always says, I wish I could just wave a magic wand and suddenly make everything better. That's not the case. But I do have some advice. Um, actually differs from like parents and kids. So for parents who have autistic kids, I would just say be patient and believe in your kids. They may have autism, but that doesn't mean they're hopeless. They're just born differently, just like you're born differently, just like I'm born differently. We're all different in our own way. And we have our own unique sets of skills and talents. And the same goes for your kids. So just be sure to just be patient. You're going to have a lot of challenges here and there, but never give up on them.
because once they learn the skills they need, they have a tendency of surprising you. <laughs> and as for the autistic kids themselves, I would just say, believe in yourself. Don't let anyone tell you what you can't do. If you think you can do something, just go on there and do it. Like if you maybe want to be an astronaut someday and you know that you're not old enough or not <clears throat> good enough, don't let that stop you. There are plenty of things you can do and practice before um, that time comes. So if you feel like doing it, just do it. That's amazing, amazing advice, Stephen. Well, that's all the time we have for today, and I want to thank Stephen for his time today at the studio. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your own experience and to all the viewers out there dealing with autism. Now, we hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Now, I'm very excited about season two of The Happiness Journey, full of inspirational stories like the one today. Now, here are a few concluding words of wisdom. How is it that with so many brilliant beings on your planet, so few recognize that when one's life encounters turbulence, choppy waters, or setbacks, it's always a sign that things are about to get wildly better than they've ever been before. And by brilliant human beings, I'm surely talking about you, my friends. Just accept it. My name is Dr. Dan Amzalag, and have yourself a wonderful day.